Hey YouTube, this ain't that a mother. I know I have a lot of explaining to do. Um, first things first, today is cycle day one, which means unfortunately I am not pregnant. It's cool. Um, I've had my time to get over it, which is kind of the reason why you guys haven't heard from me. Um, I've been doing a lot of learning in the last two weeks and, um, Lesson number one is that TTC is not that easy. It's not easy at all. Um, I learned a lot about myself uh, during this two week period. Um, one of the major reasons why I didn't do a video was because um, although I was feeling at the time that I was having a lot of pregnancy symptoms, I didn't want to have to come back and take things back if it turned out that I wasn't pregnant, which is exactly what happened. So I'm glad that I stu stood by my original decision um, to just wait until I had some more definite information. Um, this was my first cycle TTCing, so I wasn't really sure what to expect. Um, but like I said, I have learned a lot um, about myself and the process in general. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> It wasn't very fun. Um, I couldn't bring myself to be that vulnerable for you guys. Especially not yet. Sorry about the sniffles. Um, it's just my allergies. Um, but yeah, to take it from the top. Um, about four days after insemination is when I thought I start feeling some symptoms. Um, my boobs were huge. I wasn't the only one who noticed it. Um, they weren't very painful. Did notice a couple blue veins. Um, my nipples were getting bigger. Um, and I'm not one of those kind of girls who gets tender breasts right before their period. So I was really thinking that there was something going on there. Um, there were times throughout the day where I would feel dizzy. Um, especially like I deal with money a lot and I would check my hundreds, you know, like this. And when I would come back down super dizzy um my appetite definitely picked up but um obviously those weren't pregnancy symptoms um i started testing in my opinion way too early um i know i had told you guys that i was going to start testing at 10 dpo um, my anxiety got the better part of me and i actually started testing um at 7 dpo <laughs> They were all negative. Um, I had a couple of moments where I thought I saw a line forming. Come to find out that they were just um, first response indent lines or evap lines or whatever you guys want to call them. To me, they were just disappointments. Um, I had a lot of support shown during those two weeks. Um, but with the emotional up and down of it all, a lot of it just kind of was um, bad timing. You know, after so many negative tests, I felt like if it was going to happen, I would have gotten a positive by then. And there were so many people like, oh, you know, just don't give up so soon. And, you know, it's still early in the game and all those things. And they would literally talk me out of what I've already known. It wasn't going to happen. Um, so after like the second time of me already dealing with the fact that I wasn't pregnant me being ready to move on to the next cycle and me letting people <clears throat> and myself you know kind of wanting to hold on to that hope and um you know testing that following morning and still getting BFNs it just after a while was just a roller coaster ride that I was ready to get off of so I have to be honest and say that today me getting my period was quite relieving I felt happy afterwards. Um, I knew it was going to happen and I was just ready to move on. Um, I dealt with my sadness already. Um, it just wasn't my cycle. Um, the way that I saw it was um, everything was good before my tank got here. Once my tank got here, things became very stressful for me. Um, 
I hope she doesn't get upset from me telling you guys. I mean, I'm sure not. But um, the day after the tank got here, Papa lost her job. That was a lot of the stress right there. Since then, it has been replaced. But that was a lot of stress. Um, but yeah, it just seemed like it was just one thing after another after that. Um, Tootie was here in town. Had a little bit of a problem getting back home. Um, I, for anybody who really knows me, knows that I love animals. Um, I guess it would have been what six T six DPO. I was sleeping. I heard this like screaming. I'm like, either that's a kid, it's a bird, or it's a kitten. I couldn't go back to sleep. Um, tried to ignore it a couple of times. It didn't work. I got up, decided to go exploring. Um, realized that the noise was coming from a neighbor's yard. Next thing I know, um, well, first I knocked on the neighbor's fence. You know, this is New Orleans. This is not the place to get caught in the neighbor's yard. Knocked on the neighbor's door, no answer. Knocked on the other neighbor's door, no answer. Finally decided I'm going over the back fence. Probably wasn't the best choice looking back now. I was in a two week wait, but you know, I had to do something. Um, I ended up jumping the fence and following the screams and I found this kitten that was probably about six weeks old. And I kid you guys not when I tell you that he was literally being eaten alive. Like literally. Um, Once I picked him up, I realized that, you know, you know, I worked at an animal clinic for two years. There's a lot of things that I know how to do. This was something I knew on site I could not handle. I took him inside, got him some milk. He ate like a hog, tried to get him cleaned up. And once I got a good look at his injuries, I knew this was something definitely that I couldn't handle. He needed to go to the vet. Um, got him all wrapped up, got Papa up out of the bed, went to the vet. And I was told by the doctor that it looked like he had been bitten by some type of an animal. Um, basically in his hindquarters, like right around his tail. And um, the doctor was like, you know, at this point he's got like maybe a 50-50 chance at surviving. Um, and she was just like, you know, I don't know financially what you're looking at. And I'm like, look, do whatever you have to do. Money's not an object. Even if I just have to get him healthy enough to be adopted out. I'm willing to do what I have to do to save this kid. Um, she was like, you know, well, let me look at him, see what I can't do, see if he can even be saved. You know, if I get in there and I start seeing intestines and things, it's not going to be good. She went and checked them out. She came back and she told me that her 50-50 had just dropped to 90-10. Um, more than likely, he was not going to survive. Um, he had been attacked and dumped by someone um and it had been about 24 hours since his injury had occurred and flies had laid eggs and he was just full of maggots and he was just screaming for help he was basically placed in the right neighbor's yard to have someone who actually cared hear his cries it was horrible having to take him to the vet and having to agree to have him put down and everything it was really bad on top of a million other things that were going on you know it was a pretty sticky week at work whatever moral of the story is time to try again um i have picked a new donor i'm ready to move on uh, i know i don't seem very happy but it's just because i just gotten off of work i'm tired i didn't miss you guys very much um, I'm getting pretty close to 10 minutes now. I do plan on spending some more time with you guys and just explaining to you what the TTC did to me emotionally. Because I think it's important. A lot of girls who maybe haven't tried yet need to know. Um, this is real life stuff. Like TTC and it's not easy. Um, I mentioned it to a couple of my TTC, my friends that are TTC in. But um, this has been a totally humbling experience. I don't understand how women can do this for years at a time. I really don't. 
Um, I'm ready to keep it pushing, move on to my next cycle. But um, this is not something I could see myself doing for years and years at a time. Um, I really, 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 really missed my subscribers. I missed my Facebook friends. I kind of had to take a break from that too. Um, it was just really hard to deal with the disappointment of knowing that I wasn't pregnant after so many negative tests and then having people like wishing you the best this cycle and hoping this is it for you and me already knowing that it wasn't. So I just chose to wait until I had some definite information to give you guys. You know, I'm really, really glad that I didn't come on and was like, you know, oh, I'm having all these symptoms and everything is looking really good and I think I see a faint line and then have to go back and tell you guys, oh, that faint line was just an indent and all those symptoms was just maybe just some cruel joke that my body was playing on me or something that I was mentally doing to myself. I'm really glad that I did take the break. I know what to experience or what to expect now. And we can move forward to next cycle. So um, give me a few minutes. I'm going to go ahead and start a new video. And um, I'll be right back. See you in a minute.